So how is the Gita related with leadership? So the Gita is actually a talk between two leaders. Hmm? How is it talk between two leaders? Now, of course, within the tradition, the Bhagavad Gita itself describes that Krishna is the supreme divinity come on the earth. Simultaneously, if you look at Krishna's life trajectory, he rose from obscurity and against adversity. He was, uh, he was persecuted right from his birth. There was death threats out for him, not just death threats, you could say death warrants, death commissions, and formidable people out to kill him. And although he was born in an influential position, he was he had to be sneaked away just to survive. So he rose against adversity, he rose from obscurity. Krishna's coming from Vrindavan to Mathura is 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 a, if you just think of it from the story perspective, it's it's dramatic. Now here is this 10-year-old boy coming from a village for the first time to a city. And he is able to overthrow one of the most terrible tyrants of those times. And he became extremely powerful. And yet, significantly, after Krishna uh, showed that he was, in the one, one quality of leaders is, at least in those context, was that leaders have to be valiant. They have to be, val they have to be courageous and they have to be able to fight and overcome their opponents. So he overcame in with Kamsa. But then even after that, Krishna chose not to become the king. So he was offered the position of royalty. He was offered the royal throne by the Yadus. And yet what did Krishna say? Krishna said, no, this belongs to King Ugrasen. Kamsa had unlawfully taken it from him. Uh, so let us return it to him. I will be his servant. So Krishna was a leader but as a leader, he chose not to have a position. And despite not having a position, he, that did not mean that he didn't make a contribution. He was among the most vigilant and vigorous protectors of the Yadus. He protected them when they were in Mathura. He protected them when they were in Dwarka. So as a leader, Krishna I earlier said leadership is more a matter of disposition than designation. So Krishna himself is demonstrating that here. How is he demonstrating it? By assuming the role of a leader without taking any of the privileges, without seeking the position of being the king. So he kept contribution above position. So the Gita is spoken by a leader. And it is also spoken to a leader. So... Arjuna, he was, of course, born in the royal dynasty. The Kurus were one of the most powerful kings at those times. And just by being in that position, Arjuna uh, had responsibilities of a leader. But there, sometimes there are many people who grow in wealthy, powerful, prosperous, fam influential families, but they don't have any qualities. So then it's... Uh, like sometimes by dynasty, some people gain power, but they are incompetent and they make a mess of things. Arjuna was not like that. He was born in royal dynasty, but he had virtuosity. Now, virtuosity can refer to both two things. It can refer to virtues. It can also refer to expertise. Arjuna had great virtues. He had the virtues of discipline and the virtues of self-mastery. There are many incidents that demonstrate that when he resisted temptation, when he stuck to duty, but also virtuosity also refers to expertise. Expertise means in one of the skills that are vital for a warrior, for a leader in those times, that is archery. Arjuna was the Arjuna excelled to become the topmost archer. So he was at the, he was a champion among champions. There were many great archers, but he was by far the best among all of them. And in that sense. The Gita is a discussion between two leaders. It is one leader having a crisis, asking another leader. And the second leader is giving guidance, is giving inputs about how to deal with that crisis.